Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna talk about Kai Grain. Yeah, I know, do not get upset, this is not talking about him coming back, should he, will he, whatever, no. This is just talking about what he looks like right now. And this, could this be recent? I think it is. I think this is recent. So basically, uh, James Hollingshead used to be over there and he used to train with Kai very frequently in the Redcon 1 gym and he used to talk about Kai being really massive right now. So the size that he has in this photo is believable to be recent. As far as the conditioning, you can see it in all of his videos, all of his posts, he's always shredded, he's always very lean. And this one is the most recent one, he looks very lean, right? And not just lean, I mean, he's really big, he's still holding on to a lot of muscle. So in all of these videos and other photos that he was posting recently, look at this, I mean, look at his arms here. His arms don't look small, he doesn't look downsized. He doesn't look melted or anything. He does look a little bit older, a little bit melted, but still very big. In, in that one, uh, actually, video of a photo shoot, he looked smaller, he looked like he was off, he definitely looked like he downsized. As you can see right here, and also his, his waist, his stomach looked much bigger. But when was this taken, really? Was this recent? Maybe this video could have been taken like two years ago. Because in all other videos and photos that he was posting, he looks bigger and leaner and like he is on. So in this, in this photo right here, you can see that his waist has gotten bigger, like it looks really wide. His weak point in his competitive days was his chest and it looks even more shallow now. Also his forearms, like that was a weakness, that's a big weakness for him. His arms were always much, much bigger than his forearms and that has uh, progressed even more, so it's even, it's even worse now. And also the biceps, like he had a, like a big gap between the bicep and the forearm. He had those uh, short insertions and that's even more prominent now. So this is definitely him after retiring. I believe this is not him when he was competing 2016. No, I believe this is recent. Is it right now or is it a few years ago? I'm not sure, but it could be very it could be recent. It could be like a couple of weeks old. Sure, I I could believe that. You can also his legs. Like he has that lateral head that looks really big and those feathers that he's known for. But if you take a look at the, the rest of the legs, they don't look that hard, that round, that big. So he does look like a retired version of Kai that actually held on to a lot of tissue and actually managed to, 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 have a, to still have a low body fat percent, which I don't believe was a struggle for this guy who is one of the most genetically blessed bodybuilders of all time, in my opinion, at his very best, fifth best bodybuilder in the history of bodybuilding. I'd say Ronnie, Phil, Dorian, Jay, and then Kai. Other Mr. Olympia winners like Brandon Curry, Sean Roden, um, Dexter Jackson, Big Ram even, I don't think those guys were better than Kai at his best. The reason why he never won the Mr. Olympia is because he was battling an insane version of Phil Heath, and Phil Heath is second best bodybuilder of all time, arguably, maybe even the best of all time with his crazy muscle bellies. So Kai Green, he is that good. And if he kept training and doing whatever it takes, it's, it's normal that he maintained this physique, and I believe this is recent. Alright, next we have an update of uh, Nick Walker, and this update just further proves my point that I've made in one of my previous videos, where I said that Nick Walker finally went off the cycle, and I think it is pretty obvious looking at his photo right here. So he still has the size, don't get me wrong, he's still very big. And I'm not saying that he went completely off or that he's not training or eating right or whatever. He just probably lowered the dosages that he was taking. Because as you can see right here also, you can see his chest and his stomach. And he's, tar he's starting to get a little bit of a you know loose skin. Because he's starting to lose, not really loose skin, but it's not as full, as round, as stretched. It used to look like it's going to burst, how full and how, how hard he was, but now it's not really the case. So he still looks great, don't get me wrong, but uh, I, I believe he's off. 
The last time he, he trained and posed with this guy, it was a different story, right? If you talk about the size, he was as big as he is right now, but look at the fullness, especially in the chest. That's his weak area, and here his chest, even though it's a front relaxed pose, which is a pose where your chest is stretched, and if you have a weak chest, it will be exposed in this pose. It doesn't look exposed, it doesn't look bad, it still looks big and full. Also his stomach, which is very lean, it still it shows those, those thick abs that he has. I don't even talk about the arms or the delts. It all looks like he's about to burst. I mean, he was very full, very round, very hard, you know, great conditioning with a lot of fullness. Now, I wouldn't really say it's the same case. Like, you, you can see it in his stomach, for example, which is also still very lean, but you just don't see those hard looking and then prominent abdominal muscles. Also, the chest, as I said, which is his weak point, especially the upper chest, you can see it now, it's getting a little bit flatter, and also the lower chest, it's starting to, to, to kind of hang a little, and it used to pop, right? Shoulders, sure, and the arms especially, I mean, that's one of his, one of his best body parts, he is known for having great arms, that's not going away very easily, but the, the, the weak body parts that he's having, like, like chest, that, that can go away, and it, and it did, kind of, you know, it didn't go away, but it's not looking super impressive as it used to when he was blasting gear, so that's just my opinion, I, I could be wrong, it could be something else, maybe it's just, you know, he looked full and, and everything because he was in a rebound still after the show, and now he's starting to get a little bit flat, but you know, he's still very big, he's around 300 pounds, so he probably didn't lose anything, he just lost that, 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 that visual effect, you know, the pop, the, the, the hardness that you get from gear. So once again, guys, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that he lost any muscle, downsized or melted or anything like that, I'm just saying that he finally went off, which is great for him, for his health, but uh, you can see it, you can see it, and uh, let's wait and see what he's gonna look like when he jumps back on, and, I mean, based on how big he is, he probably shouldn't even consider doing that before he starts his next prep. He should probably cruise at a low dose because he doesn't need to grow in the offseason. Not much, really. What he needs is fine refinement. It's upper chest and lats, basically, and that's about it. It does it. Maybe some quad fullness, but he can do that on a, on a low dose over time. There is a long time before the Mr. Olympia. So, in my opinion, he should stay at the, whatever dosage he's using, cruise around on it, and, you know, then the blast before the show, before the Mr. Olympia. Alright, so we have an update at five and a half weeks out of Brad Wilkin. As you can see, he is getting lean, like, he is almost in a competition shape, and there are five and a half weeks, which is a lot, five and a half weeks left, and he already has shredded glutes, and he's showing uh, separation in his hamstrings. Also, his lower back is looking great, so where could he be holding fat? He pretty much doesn't have any left, very little. And I believe he's around 265, something like that. He was He's hovering around the same weight for weeks, and he's getting leaner. So, I don't know, I don't see him having to lose more than let's say five pounds, so I can definitely see this guy being 2 250, 255, about 250 or 255 at a stage, which is a lot, which is heavy, I believe the last time he was around 240, 245, so now he's gonna be about 10 pounds bigger, and if he brings the same conditioning, and if he peaks the way he did at Chicago, Wow, that's gonna be that's gonna be something. So a lot a lot more people are talking about him as the, as the potential winner. You know, most likely, I mean, the best case scenario for him is second spot against Brandon. But what if Brandon actually doesn't win? Everybody has Brandon winning it. I know, but what if he doesn't win? What if he shows a little bit off, or Bra or actually Brett or somebody else shows up like much much better? And I believe the guy that has the biggest chance, the biggest wild card in this lineup. That's Brett, because look at his, look at his photo, I mean, look at the back, it's really freaking thick and wide, and great shape for five and a half weeks out, he's heavy at this conditioning, so you can expect big things from this guy, I believe he's gonna, he's gonna surprise a lot of people at the Arnold Classic.
And the last topic I wanted to talk about a little bit is, is Flex Lewis. So there is a lot of uh, debate about this. I mean, uh, Dan Solomon said that in, in his uh, Q&A that Flex is qualified for the Mr. Olympia, but in 212, not the Open. And they, when they asked him, are there going to be any special invites? He said that so far, no, but it's only January. So he didn't say that uh, Flex has gotten one or that he won't get one. And we weren't even sure if Flex is really going to do it because he kind of promised. He said that he was uh, he was going to do it for the past, I don't know, three years. And every time we thought he's going to be on that stage, he, he ended up not doing it. Now, he, he made his post two days ago, three days ago, and he says lots of talk. And of course, he means Dan Solomon, especially in white, uh, whether he's qualified or not. He talked about that and he says, uh, I will do mine in here, in his gym. And also, he adds a hashtag, Mr. Olympia. So this basically tells us that uh, Flex is prepping for the Mr. Olympia. He is gonna do it. If he doesn't fulfill his promise this time around, that's gonna hurt his uh, integrity a lot and I don't I don't I don't believe he would do it again I think we're gonna see this guy on stage uh, whether or not he should get a special invite I think he should I think a seven time Mr. Olympia champion in bodybuilding division it's just a shorter division but still a bodybuilding division I mean the smallest guy the smallest freaking 212 guy Sean Clarida won an open show against the biggest guys in the open Sergio Levan Regan Grimes those are like the two biggest guys, along with Steve Kuklo. I mean, the tall and big guys. So that pretty much proved that 212 is not much smaller of a division than the Open. And this guy won it seven times. So with that track record, should he have to qualify by, I don't know, winning Puerto Rico Pro or something like that? I mean, I'm a seven-time Mr. Olympia winner. I don't think so. I think he deserves a special invite. As you can see right here, he's doing it, he's prepping for it, he's gonna do the Mr. Olympia, and I believe it would be the best if we saw him for the first time on that stage. It would be a great thing for bodybuilding, but that's just my opinion. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. For more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, and bye-bye.